All right, let's handle this next question. So the question reads 9x plus 15 minus 4x, all of that's on the same side, equals negative 10. So when we're handling this one here, again, the biggest thing is just making sure you write this down the right way because that equal sign, that negative 4x is on the same side. So this is gonna make a big difference because if you accidentally began by adding 4x to both sides, thinking that it would affect it, no, that's not the right way to go. The right way to go is actually just combining like terms because we have 9x and minus 4x. Everyone help me. If we have nine of something minus four of that same something, where do we end up at? What's nine minus four? That's gonna end up leaving us right here at five. So we have nine X minus four X, and that's gonna give us again, five X. Then from here, let me just make sure it's apparent that that is the combined like term. And then we have plus 15 equals negative 10. So from here, everyone, my next step is, well, I gotta get the x by itself. I got five being multiplied and then I have 15 being added. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and take care of that 15 by subtracting 15 on both sides, nice and easy. Because once I have that, cancels on the left, giving me five x and it's not gonna be negative five. We are already back 10 and we're gonna go back 15 more. Think about how that works. Negative 10 minus 15. We're just going to add the 10 and 15 and keep it negative. So there we go. We're going to have negative 25. And the last step we'll take is divide both sides by five right here and here. Canceling out on the left, leaving us with X equals negative five. And there we are. Our correct answer here will be C, negative five, not B, but C. All right, in this next one here, we see that we're trying to evaluate an expression that's rather large and could be confusing because we have P and Q, which can be very similar if you read quickly. So with that said, let's be careful here. We have P equals five. So P right there and P right there. And then Q is going to equal six and Q is here and there. So we have to be careful again, one step at a time. So we'll go ahead and replace all those values. So we'll have four times P squared. So that'll be four times five squared minus two multiplied by P, which is five multiplied by Q, which is six. And then we add three times Q, which is gonna be three times six. Now that we're here, we gotta be a little more careful now because we have those negatives and we have to make sure we understand the order of operations the right way. Here we have five squared, no more parentheses, so we'll move on to exponents. So five squared is five times five, which is gonna be 25, nice and easy. So we have 25, so that will be four, times 25, which will be 100. Over here on this part, we have two times five, which is 10, 10 times six, that's gonna end up being 60. So right over there, that's gonna be minus 60 because we have that negative there in front. And then lastly, we have three times six, which is 18, so that'll be right there right here and we're done all we need to do is take 100 minus 60 which is 40 and then from there we add 18 and that gives us a final answer of 40 plus 18 which is 58 and there we are the correct answer here is answer choice d after following the order of operations and there we are my party people hope you had a good time in this one all right, next problem. So we're gonna read the question first as always, and immediately we see that it says, hey, what is the total cost? And so this is one thing that I love about word problems is when we deal with money. Because when we deal with money, this is one of the most recognizable contexts that we can come across. I think we've all experienced money at some point or another. So with that said, 
we want to know what the total cost is. So it sounds like we're making a transaction and we want to add everything up. So let's go ahead and understand the context first and get it going. So we, he, we see here that it says mugs cost $7 each. You buy 15 mugs and three tumblers at $12 each. And then you use a $21 coupon. What is the total cost? Okay. So as we think about this, my party people, as we think about this, let's go through it. So when we think about the mugs that cost $7 each and we buy 15 mugs, let's highlight that together. What are we going to do with the $7 and the 15 mugs, given that we see the word each? What are we going to do there? Remember, when we're trying to achieve the grand total, that's going to be multiplication. When we're trying to find a piece, that will be division. In this case, we're trying to find the total cost. So $7 for each mug, 15 of those mugs, that's multiplication because that's going to give you the grand total cost of the mugs. Likewise, if we turn our attention over to the tumblers, we have three of them. It doesn't matter how many we have really, but we have three of them in this situation and they're valued at $12 a piece. So what that tells me, everybody, is that the three tumblers at $12 a piece will again be multiplication. So currently what I see so far, what I've mapped out, is that we have seven multiplied by 15. And then we also have three multiplied by 12. We have both of those there. But now we have to address the $21 coupon. Everybody, how does using a coupon affect the final transaction? How much we are going to pay at the end? That's gonna be subtraction, right? A coupon means that we're paying less. A coupon means that we're saving money. So when we think about that coupon right there, that coupon tells me that we will subtract $21 at the end. So with that said, everybody, there's our plan. We'll find out how much the mugs cost. Then we'll subsequently find how much the tumblers cost. And then we will subtract the coupon. Once we do the three of those things, we'll have our final answer. So that's how we want to take the approach of planning the problems out. Now let's actually calculate. So here we go. We have seven multiplied by 15, some mental math, seven times 10, 70, seven times five, 35, 70 plus 35 is 105. Don't believe me? Follow along for some mental math. Here we go. So 15 multiplied by seven, five times seven is going to be 35. Then we have one multiplied by seven. That's gonna be seven plus three will be 10. So that'll be 105 right there. Up next, we have ourselves three times 12. Mental math tells us that'll be 36. And then lastly, we are gonna be subtracting the $21. And so there we are. That's what we have to do. 105 plus 36 minus 21, and we're good. You can choose to go in that order, 105 plus 36, giving you 141. And then 141 subtract 21 is gonna bring us down to 120 as our final answer. And that's how we're going to get Answer choice B, because again, the cost that we're paying at the end with the $21 coupon applied brings that total cost down to $120. Again, we were for sure, we were for sure at 141, but when we take the coupon into account, 141 minus 21 gets us 120.